It's oh, a palindrome. Yeah. Oh, cool, right, man. Coming through. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Episode 686. I love that number. Oh, you it's know why? Best. Because that's a brand. What brand? It's a clothing brand, a snowboard clothing brand, 686. Is it based on some sort of like area code? No, thing? but that's actually a good question and probably. <laughs> Probably in reality it is. Yeah, it's probably, I don't know. I bet it's Utah. Oh, you know them. Yeah. Those wild Utahns. Mm -hmm. Um, All the good snow. How are you? How are you doing? How are you doing? Um, Oh. You were going to say it. I was. I was going to talk about my significant other. Uh, Yeah. He is so excited for you to come out here. And he Mm -hmm. said that he's going to try to incorporate the word pow and powder into as many <laughs> sentences as possible and see just how frustrated he could make you. So that is look forward cruel. to that. That is cruel. Right. As long as he doesn't whistle, don't remind him of my I won't. And, and I was thinking about that because I, I... He was bugging me the other day with his whistling. <laughs> see? It's so uh-huh. annoying. Because I had a stupid song stuck in my head. Because that's what happens is he whistles the song and then yeah. I can't stop singing the song. Oh, you know what? This is great because I, I had it stuck in my head this morning. And then I, I was thinking, do I just listen to this song on... Sometimes that helps. Sometimes people. it does. But then I decided that would be a bad idea. And now I don't even remember what the song was. So this is great. That's good. This okay. is good. Let's not think any more about this. Yeah. Don't. And... So. <laughs> He's going to do really... it. It's going to be great. Really? He does it that frequently that you're guaranteeing that he'll do it? Guaranteeing. Guaranteeing God. multiple occasions where you're going to have to say that's enough. Hopefully enough to worry. Just like, that's unbelievable. You know what? I don't, don't want to steal his it. joy. I do. Because his <laughs> whistling will steal my joy. You're right. Like, come on. You're right. Gotta... Susie does not like no loud noises. No. No, let's let's calm down, everybody. Curb your enthusiasm. You love it. All right. Um, let's start with Bonky Bonks, which is on HBO. There Wait, that's a-, a real thing? No. Oh. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. I thought you were saying let's start. I was like, hold the motherfucking phone. Don't tell me there's an actual... I need to know what this is. Is it about bounce houses? Is it about... It could have gone anywhere. Guys, I maybe have had a half a glass of wine, but that's it. I'm just saying that what I'm about to tell you about is bonkers is all. But it's my fault for, you know, (laughs) introducing new slang. Um, On HBO... There's a six-part documentary series, so it's a real commitment. Whoa. Six parts. It's called Mind Over Murder. Oh. And it's about a group of people called the Beatrice Six. When And you know when there's like a number after it, it's yeah. like wrongfully accused. Oh, really? Nightmare. Yeah, like remember oh. the Central Park Five or whatever? Oh. There's always like a number attached. Huh. Um. So the Beatrice Six are the wrongfully people, accused or excellent R and B group, <laughs> or Motown Phillies. Yeah, back Motown, again. yes, it's either <laughs> Motown music. Oh, oh God, that's awful and problematic in and of its own. Oh, right, right. Well, I was thinking Voice to Men, but you're thinking Jackson Five. You're so right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I, I was just you all, know all of all of the above. All Everything the above. works. Yeah, yeah. In this case, the Beatrice Six were a group of people who were um, convicted of a murder and rape of a woman. And the reason they were convicted is because five of the six of them confessed. And they didn't just confess. Oh. They gave like very specific details about how it happened and who was there and why and whatever. And so... This series starts with that, this murder, and then these people come in and they they confess and blah, blah, blah. And then eventually you're shown why um, they confessed to things that they did not do. And they were what in jail for- What the heck for, would make somebody confess to things that they didn't do in a well, way this like- this is the real- Right. Especially in such detail. Yeah. And multiple- right. 
Well, what? the thing that makes someone do that is what we keep talking about on the show over oh. many of the last few episodes is the fragility of the human brain and how the flexibility of our brain can be advantageous and help with survival in certain situations. But in other situations, like when you're going for police questioning, oh you can end up all mixed up about like what's true, what happened. And it's hard for people to believe because it, as your day-to-day -day life, you think I would never be tricked into confessing to a murder no. that I oh didn't my do. God. Please. We didn't think that we were, we would follow through with what a manager, uh, manager in air quotes or police officer was telling us to do on the phone. Oh my gosh. Right. I don't think I would confess to a murder I didn't do. Well, oh, that's in, terrifying. But let's consider some of the things we know to be true about when you go in for these questionings. Number one. Leading the, the law, witness. Yeah. Law enforcement yeah. often says little white lies, you know, to manipulate the person. Like they'll say like, well, your buddy said such mm -hmm. and such, and we know you did it. Like, have you ever watched the the 48 hours show on, um, yeah. And that TLC makes you question. Amy. Yeah. And if somebody said to me, I do this all the time. I'm like, where, what did we do last night? Where did I have dinner? What did I eat? If somebody, I like, truly think mm -hmm. that you are a prime candidate for this. Prime. Because when we watched that show, and I mean, we, as in you and me, Susie, when yeah. we watched that show about the woman who was in Italy and ended up getting caught for murder, or going down for murder. Yeah. I was like, that could happen to me. I honestly yes. saw how something similar, how I could, I could fall. You have somebody. a very active imagination. And I have, um, um, incongruent affect where when I get really nervous, I laugh at times where I should be probably serious or crying. And that makes, makes people you look like a yes. psychopath. Totally, <laughs> totally. But instead I'm just neurodivergent. Okay. Leave me alone. <sighs> She's got a tender spirit. You guys <laughs> uh, No, for real. Not, it's not just you either. It's right. all of us. This is just the, the plasticity oh, of the God. human brain can be manipulated and molded and it's can be wonderful in some ways, but it, in the wrong situation, you can fuck up your life because oh. these guys got, they went to jail for years and years. All of them. How do you not say no? I didn't like uh, some of them did at certain points. Like this one guy, he was like, I, I said that I did that, but I didn't. I wasn't even there. They don't even know this lady. They they weren't even at her apartment or anything. Okay. And the investigator was like, bullshit, and like got real aggressive. And you can watch it. It's all on tape. And, and you know, um, like oh, memories are so f fragile that you can, yes. you can convince somebody like be totally. They're unreliable. Don't you think, I do feel like the older I get, the harder time I have differentiating between what I dreamt and what really happened. Totally. I'll be like, because I start dreaming about boring ass things now. Mm -hmm. I don't dream about going to an Remember underground. Remember I said like, cause life is so weird now that I feel like our dreams are just like pretty much the same as real life. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't remember. I honestly don't know if that happened in life. Or yeah. Time. I don't know. I can't trust anything. So if you are up for a commitment, this is such a good watch because by episode four, you're just like, I cannot believe what happened to these people. And wow. it's tragic. And the worst part about it is the the lead investigator. I mean, he is unrepentant, even though DNA put none of them at the scene, none of their DNA was there in any way. And they had like semen and, um, you know, other DNA. <sighs> And it was this one guy that they now know who did it. They didn't even have matching bodily fluids. Like they knew it didn't match his. And they still. This was far enough ago oh, that like mostly what was relied upon was, um, you know, blood type. And so they kept adding to like who was there until they got like the right blood type at least. Um, and then oh. they turned down like the more uh, expensive oh, DNA. Yeah. Oh, they the turned down the shocker. Testing. Didn't fit their their 
Exactly. Yeah. They were just like, no, we're good. We're yeah. good. We got them. We got them, everybody. And then these guys went to jail. Their lives are ruined. Um, and then thankfully they were ultimately exonerated. But how many years did they spend in jail? About 10 each. Oh! You know, 10 oh! years. Yeah. Oh, that's long. And they, did, they didn't even know each other. They weren't like they had heard of each other, but they weren't like some pack of friends. Are at these all. kind of like uneducated individuals? Okay. Yeah, they. Some of them had some special needs. Some of them had trauma, like severe trauma. This lives. is terrible. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Which makes you more vulnerable to these kinds of manipulations yeah, and yeah. stuff. But what I was going to say is the worst part about it is the lead investigator is completely unrepentant, and he's in it, and he will not say that he made mistakes even though oh. we've we can see it on the video well in a in a way i feel like that's the same fragility of the mind where your mind has to deny evidence right in front of it because what that would mean if you copped to that in the same way i mean that that that's similar right it is because he hung his whole identity on like, yes. I am an amazing investigator and I solved this situation, this crime. And to admit that like, you really yeah. messed up. It was too, it's too painful. And so the brain protects but itself. If you hung, hang in there for all six episodes, there is some really cool redemptive stuff about it where people change and learn and grow. And it is Really oh, compelling okay. to watch. This is this is a big. Uh, usually, you are are uh, a tough critic on anything longer than three or four episodes. <laughs> yeah, I'm booked solid over here. Yeah, like, get to the so point. You're like, you know, if it's not good, you're not wasting your time. Yeah, there was some really cool parts that came about later where you think, okay, we've done some good here. Like I'll tell it. you what else has done some good, and that is freaking neutral. Tip of the oh. hat. Oh, Suze, can I just say, this might be the first month that you have been able to tuck that little bit of hair (sighs) behind your ear or into the headphones, because usually when we talk about this, your instinct is to just grab that little piece. I know exactly, right? But now there's not that, it's grown out. It's, yeah, I've. So I chopped some a lot of hair off, but what my, you didn't even show me your cute new haircut? Well, because it's not cute, Sarah. I bet it is. It's not. It isn't. I hate it. When you it, cut but, here, I'm going to do your hair, and you're going to love it. All right, It'll be good. Fingers okay. crossed. But yeah. it had to be done. Yeah. Because my stylist said all the neutrophil growth uh-huh. is healthy and full and amazing, God. but. We got to get rid of what the yeah. other lady ruined. Yeah. And so oh. I know I can relate to any of you that have had thinning because of like hormones, pregnancy, stress, whatever. Mm-hmm. And Nutrafol is so helpful in sort of helping foster that regrowth and get you back where you want to go, even though it takes time, mm-hmm. but it'll help and it'll uh, expedite the process. And they have a deal for you guys. So let me tell you what it is. You can grow thicker, healthier hair and support our show by going to Nutrafol.com and entering the promo code BRAINCANDY to save $15 off your first month subscription. This is their best offer anywhere, and it's only available to U.S. customers for a limited time. And you get free shipping on every order. Get $15 off at Nutrafol.com, spelled N-U-T-R-A-F-O-L.com, promo code BRAINCANDY, and that's on our website as well in case you forget it. And I find it to be really helpful and We'll get there eventually. Got to yeah. let it grow I out. Your hair looks so cute. But um, okay, so that's that. I recommend it. It's intense, and it's so sad that that can can yeah. happen. Yeah. But whatevs. Oh, God, that's the way it goes. Better not be cut anywhere with any kind of murder situation, or I'm um going in for sure, hundred percent. I mean, one of the gals, she just happened to live upstairs in the apartment building. Like that was her only relationship to anything. And boy, it's very, like you get, you feel so much compassion for these people because they were, yeah. my God, blindsided. Can you imagine if no. the police showed up no. and said, <laughs> I would, I'm like, telling you, you'd be visiting arrest. me in jail. Well, and you know how you have that thing about like, if people don't believe you, 
Like this is the extreme of that. Like you're yeah. saying, I don't know this person. I don't, I, I've never, and they're saying you murdered her. No. Oh my God. Wow. It's intense. Yeah. I think those cops, the fact that they went on and continued to probably do their job and, mm. and affect, Oh, that's really problem. That's there's problems there. A brainiac Ooh. sent me this article. Do you remember, I think we may have even talked about it on the show years ago. Do you remember that lady that was found in a storm drain? It's not funny, but it is. Like she was like missing and then they found her below the in the sewer. <laughs> it rings a bell. I think we talked about it, but yeah. I know I've read about it before. But she keeps find like being found in in these storm drains. What and do you mean she? The same woman? This same woman. What? Has oh, wait, been whoa, found whoa, 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 Alive. Two or three times. Alive. Oh, in a storm drain. She's. This is. Something ain't right. Something ain't right. Okay, but so. <laughs> even what? though you know it, nothing what? about it, I want you to be like, here's what that could be. Because. I need answers. And- oh no! This is the this is the firefighter who lights the fires and then puts them out. Okay, so she got a ten- Maybe the first one was yep. an accident. Yep. She got. And a she ten- got so yep. much attention. Yep. I mean, it's very different come up than with the firefighter some new thing. But I mean, it's ways. like she is putting herself. It's the opposite of that. Instead of making herself the hero, she's making herself the victim. Yeah. This is like a. Uh, oh, what do they call it? Fictitious illness disorder. Wait, like hypochondriacs? Yeah, that's like the clinical term for it. My God. Okay, so... But like more than that. It's more like th- like m- making yourself sick, that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Who am I if I'm not ill or who am I if I'm not a damsel in distress, maybe in this case? Right. Well, I feel like she should come up with some new ways to get in. Absolutely, peril. because that's a little boy who cried wolf situation. Right, <laughs> right. And like how many times come on. Can you fall into the sewer before we're like, you, you know like, what, you're on your own. You know lady. those people who you say get get I say you say because you've talked about this on podcast, but like get get hit by a uh, uh, lightning bolts lightning yeah. bolts who get what's the word what is the word i what like who get Just struck lightning? by lightning that's the i'm like what is the phrase for that who gets struck like, by lightning more than once yeah and and even those guys are crazy to like think that they could get away with saying three times yeah, it's like stop holding a golf club in a storm or whatever. Exactly. After the third or fourth time you've been electrocuted, we're like, mm, now it's on you, buddy. Yeah, you're not Ben this Franklin. Is, yeah, the, exactly. <laughs> this is this is that. There you go. Okay, you see them out there with a kite and a key? Yeah. Oh, my oh God. God. That would be so, so funny. <laughs> this. <laughs> so this hooker just keeps, like, getting caught up in a storm drain. I mean, come on. Oh, it says, yeah, third time in two third- years. Ma'am. What are you doing where you... Ma'am. Stop stop playing your storm drains. Yeah. (laughs) Are there no follow-up questions? Is this woman well? Yeah. Well, I I think that's evident that she's not well. Is what I'm saying. What if if this is like... Remember how... Remember how you interviewed the BTK killer? Or I get BTK. That's just his name. I wrote him letters, yeah. Wrote him... Yeah, wrote him letters. And Mm -hmm. there was a discussion about how he remembers being trapped or not him. His mom was like trapped in a mattress and he rescued her. Mm -hmm. This feels like she's like like it can create some sort of hard wiring where you think like this is the solution. She got rescued one time and maybe she she like getting off on this. I mean, not like that. Clearly. I think so. Clearly this is benefiting her. I think at a certain point for people, if, if this, like, what do you do? Do you just, do you, like, it's very expensive to dispatch everyone. <laughs> Stop. Do you send her the bill? Yeah. 
No, I'm like being well, legit. I'm for real asking. No, for real. Remember that um, story we talked about where the guy kept calling 911? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, yeah, we're, eventually somebody's you get paying fined. for this. Mm-hmm. Oh, eventually you get fined. Okay, good. Yeah. Good, good, good. Because that or like seems if you like say a little my crazy. kid is missing. Right. And they do a big search, but it turns out you murdered him and he's buried in your basement or something. Oh! I mean, like, that's the no, like, yes, least of, of it, but I'm just saying. But, like, then you get fi- Then, like, you have to pay for the. Yeah, man. Mm-hmm. Stop doing that, weirdo. Yeah. Oh, my okay. God. Um, I also would recommend the HBO docuseries on the fucking. If she comes out of that storm drain dressed in gaiters and waterproof clothing, yeah. then, right. you know, I want to know what's her footwear. That'll tell me everything I need to know if she was planning. Right. And you know did how, like, your guilt, like, it's like second degree or first degree based on, like, how much prepping you did? That's all I need. Like, if there's proof that she prepped for this. I actually didn't know that. Like, but I, you, I see what you're saying. Like, is you know, it premeditated or not? Premeditated. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Th- then it changes the, the, the severity of the, the sever- this consequences. Is that. This yeah. is th- Do that. <laughs> this is that. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's all I'll say. Continue. Sorry to interrupt. I, I just, just had to get that I last also- bit in. It seemed, it seemed important. I also recommend the docuseries on HBO, Low Country, which is about those insane murders in like South Carolina or whatever, where remember it all began with that kid who was underage drinking and then wrecked his boat. Does this ring a bell? And the girl died. She died in the wreck. Mm -mm. And then like that, they're a very high profile family, very powerful family in South Carolina. And that boat accident, quote unquote, was like, the beginning of the unraveling quote of like, unquote Ooh. well i mean technically it was an accident but it was oh god that like he was drunk as a skunk right. and like had been taught his whole life that there are no consequences for uh-huh. like anything and so it was t- complete negligence and kind of like sociopathy really and oh, this is like the same army hammer shit yeah, it kind of it's, is. It, oh my god, Susie, you're right. It fits our our thing of like, mm-hmm. That, <laughs> Je, uh, what's what's his name too? Uh, uh, I'm gonna get his name right because I get got it wrong before. Fred? Nope. Robert. Robert. Durst. Durst. <laughs> <laughs> I went real slow. Ah, this is what Fred? happens every time I try to pronounce no. nuclear. Nuclear. <laughs> No! Ah! <laughs> what is with you people? Lincoln always says nuclear, and I go, that's not a word. Nuclear. It's new, clear. Clear, clear. That's nuclear. how you spell it. Nuclear. It's spelled. I Don't ask me how to fucking spell it. I don't. <laughs> Suze. You ADHD people are like my cross to bear. <laughs> I swear. <laughs> okay. So anyway, this boat accident was like the the thing that made the house of cards fall. Mm -hmm. So for a hundred years, this family ran that town. They were the attorney general. Oh, that's bad. They had it all sorted. Then you get to decide what cases get tried and what cases don't. So you're definitely playing favorites there. Law enforcement are like buddy, buddy with you. And everything is just like, it's like white people crime. Yeah. And so then, Next thing you know, that son, the one that wrecked the boat, and his mom were murdered. <gasps> and the dad was like, this is clearly a um, revenge for the boating accident. Like, people are mad that he did that. But he, the dad is now on trial for those murders. And of this his documentary, wife and son? This yeah. sounds like a plot of a... Like it's a like Dallas drama. or something. Yeah, or like yeah. Ozark or something. I didn't see, mm-hmm. but it ma- I imagine. <laughs> Your references are like modern and mine are like 1984. Yeah, I was like, oh, like uh, Dallas, let me throw you guys shot something more, more recent. So uh, so the under 70 crowd can have something to relate to. Susie, how are we going to stay relevant? <laughs> For real. <laughs> what is wrong with me? I'm like, oh, you mean who shot JR? <laughs> Right. Okay. Ozark. That's what it's like. <laughs> Whatever that is. Um, <laughs> yes. 
And then this documentary shows that there are so many more deaths and nonsense that happened. And See, it is un- I'm telling you, unbelievable. I White feel like are fucked up. They are, and I feel like my family. It's probably. I mean, oh we've been in America God. for a long ass fucking time, and they were all attorney generals and shit like that. Bad things, guaranteed, yeah. guaranteed. Like, well, because if you believe, a nice way to put it. Right. And if you truly believe foul play, there are no consequences. Yeah. I I know it. I mean, I benefit then, none from the, cause I'm totally cut off from all of my family, but yeah, because you tried to undo. Yeah, I did. And they were like, that. shh, shut up. Yeah. Right. You're messing up our whole yeah, thing. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. But if enough stuff happens or if it's high profile enough, then it can unravel. Yeah. If you get enough eyeballs on it where people are like, it's just a a matter of time. Yeah. That's true. But sometimes it takes a long ass time. Yeah. Mm, Man. It's crazy. It really is. Ooh, that's, that, that's, I can't believe it. Well, yeah. The story, of course they're real. I, I do believe they're, of course. It's just crazy how. I'll tell you what else I believe. And that is how great Jenny Kane clothing <gasps> is i wish i were wearing them right now but i just took them over to eli's house because you know i was who's. like i cannot <laughs> well we were having a dinner party the other night and i like this is so crazy when your comfy clothes are also your show-off clothes totally that's what happened that's I was like, what jenny why am I not is. my fancy slippers <laughs> so I had to bring them over. I had to bring them back because usually I save them for my studio. It's like I wear them around here. Yeah. They keep my. Yeah. They are the best. But I'm like I am depriving the rest of the world from seeing the most beautiful shoes because they're so comfortable too. Yeah, and let me tell you, this is not an exaggeration. Sarah can attest to this. Mm-hmm. At the from the day I received my Jenny Kane mm-hmm. um, cashmere sweater. Mm-hmm. Um. I wore it every single day, including like, I'll take it off and then I'll put my jammies on and then I'll put this. Yeah. It's appropriate for that. Cause it's like, is it a robe? Is it a sweater? Is it just, um, my other skin? Because that's how good it is. And what I love about them is these are like pieces that you'll have forever. Oh yeah. Oh my God. I love those shoes. Yeah, Sarah keeps sending me pictures of her wearing I do. Them. <laughs> and then I told Eli, I was like, I really want to wear these to brunch because we were going out to brunch the other you day. Could. You can wear them to brunch. He said, you shouldn't because I, uh, you should keep them nice. It's too snowy outside. Oh, that's true. He's right about I, that. He is right because I was going to take them right in, out into the Colorado mud. And nope. Those have not. No, the, they're, they're, too, they're, they're, I they're love them. They're so nice. They're so, and you're right. They're the warmest shoe. My foot is like sweaty, which you need because it's literally five degrees out here today. Yeah. I'm looking at my watch because my. Because I told her, I said, I watch. have the boots. And I'm like, those are only to be worn on the coldest of days because they're so effective. They're so but good. their sweaters oh. are incredible. It's just forever pieces. And you can find yes. your forever pieces at jennykane.com. Our listeners get 15% off your first order when you use code Brain Candy at checkout. That's 15% off your first order. It's J I N N I. K A Y N E dot com promo code brain candy. Treat yourself because you deserve it, people. I'm telling you, it's. Yes. I just bought. I have it in gray, and then I just bought the um, ivory because oh, I'm a nice. fancy lady. Yeah. Oh. Wears white. Sometimes. I'm going to send you this article. I just read this whole thing about how there's this new look of like what do they call them? They call them like vanilla ladies or no, latte ladies no. or something of oh, women God. who wear all 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 like neutral like beige. Yeah, Susie, I was wearing an off-white matching suit as I was reading the Never. article, and then I showed it to Eli, and he was like, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I am that lady. It's like Coastal Grandma, but yes. better. We all just want to be like mm-hmm. Diane Keaton. and, and, and. <laughs> It's true. Anyway, you guys will love them. Check them out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, Low Country is what it's called. It's bonkers. It's like, yeah. man, it's effed up. Hey, did you hear, kind of speaking about like crime and whatever, yeah, you know, did I'm you sub- hear about how 
the Stanford Prison Experiment, which is familiar, the most yes, famous, yes, reference that we reference it all the time. Psychology experiment. Somebody started looking at the files from it because they wanted to see like what what went on and all that jazz. And the, if you're not familiar, the the experiment was done at Stanford, and it had two groups of students. One group was um, assigned to be the quote unquote prisoners. And then the other group was assigned to be the wardens or like the, I don't know, prison guards or something. Prison guards. Yeah. And then for two weeks, they just lived on campus and played those roles. And they just were supposed to be demonstrating what happens and what's human instinct and all that in that situation. So it's so famous because it, it, found that the guards very quickly became maniacal and dictatorial yep. and treated the prisoners like subhuman and the prisoners revolted and and what and then but eventually the pr- uh, prisoners also like sort of just accepted that yes, they were like garbage submit. and stuff like that everybody fell into the identity that they were labeled yes the roles right. that they were given If you were told that this is your job and this is what you do, it didn't matter what your background was, where you came from, uh, understanding that this was a study, you just did... What was expected of you. Yes. And it's often used as evidence that humans are sort of just kind of like low-life animals, really. Um, But anyway, somebody started to look at the actual files from that time. And watch the videos in their entirety. And if you've ever seen the videos, I mean, they're compelling because it's so disturbing what what these students went through and what they did. But if you watch them in their entirety, evidently there's some clips where the researcher's assistant was also one of the guards. And this assistant... Was on oh. camera and on audio being like, hey, you need to be rough. You need to be cruel. You have to assert yourself. You have to be violent and all the stuff, like instructing them basically. Yeah. And the the student was like, well, but I'm really not tough like that. I'm really not like that. And they're like, well, you better gear up. Here's what, that's what we're going to do. And so clearly they were being coached. Yeah the guards to be violent and aggressive. And you're never going to duplicate this study. Right. Because now you couldn't do it. It's totally unethical. Mm -hmm. Uh, See, this is the fucking problem with all those studies, which is, I mean, this is why diagnosing, I can't, this is why we don't work with insurance at my practice. And because like, it's just, well, I mean, that's well, there's the a price to pay, why. but yes, with anything, yeah. there's like, because that would broaden would, your client base, but then you'd have to sacrifice probably other yeah. elements of your, yeah, for um, sure. Yeah. Practice. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you got to diagnose people with things that are di- like diagnoses that are based on, uh, you know, the DSM and now with what I'm like, I don't this, Based well, on right, these studies. It, exactly. Everything can be stems flawed. For, yes. And mm-hmm. if the if the thing that you're using to mm, reference future studies and all this is inherently flawed, then so is all the future work. That, it's kind of like when a judge, when you find out, oh, that judge has been taking bribes and all the yeah. other cases that the judge tried get thrown out. This yeah. kind of feels like it's a very loosey-goosey thing to base a lot of like assumptions on when this whole yeah. study is flawed. Well, because it does Same mean with the Pavlov the... one. Remember we talked about that? And that guy was like cutting out the fucking esophaguses of dogs. <laughs> Wasn't even using a bell. Yeah. What's not even using a bell? Right. And so, like, the conclusions could be accurate. It's not saying this right. should all be thrown out. Right. But it it puts into question the reliability of the conclusions because, yeah. well, if I'm... Well, Sarah, yeah. wait, I wanted to say... Let me read specifically and then I'll say what I 
wanted to think. Uh, let me see if I can find it. Um, oh, no, that's a different one. But basically, you know, we always refer to how the challenge mm-hmm. kind of feels like the Stanford Prison Experiment sometimes. Totally. Because we know, and maybe more so now that we've learned this, we know what's expected of us. Yeah. We know that to make a great show, you have to be hey, shocking. You need to ask, act a little more like this. I was my third season. Well, I'm not really yeah. the party type. Well, you need to act like the party type if you think you're going to get cast on here again. And I did. For real? They yes. said that? Well, they didn't say that. The, the, my, my peers said that. That was the message I got from those right. around, from, from wherever. Yeah, like the other participants and in yeah. the Stanford prison experiment, the other participant who happened to also be the research assistant is saying like, hey, hey, we're the guards here. We're running this show and you need to assert yourself and yep. you need to be this way or that mm-hmm. way. Well, that's going to modify their sense of expectation and then probably their behavior. So. Interesting. Something to consider. Where did you hear this? Where did you see this? This was on NPR. Wow. Um, they were interviewing someone who I believe has a new book out, but I don't recall the this name is, of the book. This is the crazy thing is like what this really shows me is how much I, – like I remember being in grad school and doing the research projects and you're really tired. You have so many papers to write. You're like – Going through the motions kind of. You're going through the motions. Mm-hmm. You're like, I'll just look at the highlight video. Yeah. And then you doc. Mm-hmm. I and every other student before me did that. And then this one student's like, maybe we should watch the full video. Mm-hmm. That's the only thing. That, that's like what happened. Yeah. He's like, oh, if shit. You know the, that's too, totally you know different. The context. Like if yeah, you because as a I, person. I, there would be no. I I can see how easy it would be to just keep you like that's what that's what research does so often oh well and you have to you, there is a level of trust in that the, the yes. people that came before me were following ethical rules or at least exposing any kind of limitations or mistakes that were made and these people are still alive so like the right. the guy that ran the study was like yes there are some methodological problems with oh. this experiment, but the conclusions are still valid. Well, how do you know? Uh, that's how do you a know? Big leap. How do you but know? But this is again, this is this person's identity. It's like the detective in that <gasps> thing. Yes. Oh, well, Sue's if you undo good. this, this is yes. his legacy. Good connection. Because yes. it's human like nature. Right. Right. Why would you want to unravel the thing that's like propping you up? Yeah. So there you go. Mm. The, the thing, the other thing that I was about to bring up that turned out was it from another thing. Funnily enough, was from an article about why are Legos so painful to walk on? Oh my God. Which I heard somebody, has- you, I, I, in the book that we're reading for book club, they use the, the, insult like step on a lego or something and i was like that is so fucking genius i bookmarked it and i was going to talk about it so it's so funny that you bring this up it was like you were in my brain oh well we've all done it we've all stepped on a lego it's a (gasps) nightmare and it's hard to believe anything so small could be so painful (laughs) but there was a smithsonian article that was just saying like here's the, the physics of why that is true. Um, so they were saying, they were comparing it to stepping on the, like the hot coals or oh broken glass. Okay. And we talked about the hot coals thing and how like, I fucking hate it and how it's all stupid. Like any kind of like trust or bonding right. or yeah. like. My mom did this the weekend do, before like, she had her accident. And then when she had her accident, they were like, how did what happened to your feet when you fell? And she had to explain to them that she walked on hot coals the previous weekend. No, yes. only Sally. Only Classic. Sally. Yeah. Well, they were saying first of all, the hot coals thing is kind of bullshit because the people that conduct these, like they right. let the fire go for about forty-five minutes to an hour, so that it's then 
just embers, you know, mm-hmm. it's not like fucking roaring campfire or something. It's those like coals that are still illuminated and that they, even if it says like, this is 900 degrees, that really like the speed at which you walk across them prevents any right. kind of- Right, heat transfers um, at a rate that's true not fast. True damage, quickly. yeah. But then broken glass, which is more oh. like the Lego experience. Oh, the sharp pressure pain versus heat transfer pain. Yeah. Totally so different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They yeah. said that the broken glass thing is more like the Legos, but it's still less painful. What because all broken Legos? <laughs> getting all right? broken Legos. That when you're walking on broken glass, <laughs> that... They, it's broken up enough that they're small pieces and then oh. that they are able to be pushed down and pressed in and shift. Yeah. Like your like skin can absorb get... the, the, uh, the shape so as to not, I, okay. I can totally see exactly where we're going with this. Yeah. Yeah. But then Legos, they do not shift. They don't give at all. And so oh. the... Whereas on the glass, the weight is distributed on your whole foot. So nothing is hitting glass enough to break the skin. Whereas with Lego, it's like wherever it goes in is where it goes in. The only thing that's moving is your foot rather than the ground below. Uh huh. And so it creates this, a lot of pain. And the reason why they don't hurt kids as much is because they just don't have as much weight. So the weight is less. And so then the pressure is less. Um, but the thing that struck me about this was it says the, the reason that people even do this, cause this is growing in popularity, whether it's on TikTok or just in real life. Walking that people across are like, Legos? Yeah. Like they're trying to beat the record. I walked okay. on Legos further okay. and all that is because, you know, it, it builds trust with groups and like uh, that thing of uh transfer of arousal too, where like yeah. when you do it with people, it okay. increases trust and bonding and all that jazz. We're missing such a huge but fucking it chunk says, of this. Um, it's annoying to me. What? The, um, okay. I want you to continue with what you're saying. And then I will, I will. Okay. I just, okay. I just wanted to say that in the article, the following sentence was, um, the groups that shared painful challenges were more cooperative during economic, oh. an economic game as compared to those who didn't go through the painful experiences and it built their social bond and trust. And so I was like, why doesn't this apply on the challenge? Because we're still, it's, it's a, on one, you're like doing things and, and you're all split in the pot. It does do that when it's a team challenge and everybody shares the pot. It doesn't do that if you were making it one person gets everything in the end. Mm -hmm. That's it. Making it where there's like one winner or loser cancels out any kind of bonding or trust that can be developed. But I will say that's what the the shared pain is what makes it so everybody goes, we're like a family. Mm-hmm. It creates the sense of bonding, but we, but it, it, but what you have on the challenge that you don't have in this situation is the cutthroat, like, I'm going to throw you under the bus and, and or, like take the money and run. Okay. Then Sarah, yeah, are you trying <laughs> See are you, there. cause I mean, you and Johnny were on the same team and I know yeah. what you're saying. Like it, and the, in the end yeah. it was versus yeah. you were opponents, but like, you kind of thought I did. You were going to win together. So, like, how come it didn't apply? Because then, at the last minute, whatever bonding and stuff yeah. occurred Wasn't was canceled any, out yeah. because now you're opponents. Yeah, it's a real bummer. Yeah, but I do think that this is what you see in in um, like people who have survived an accident together. I think this is what you see, like a. a you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think this is what you'd see in people um, who like went through something like a struggle, but there wasn't anything that they could like that could be gained through the other. Like it wasn't for a prize. 
Mm-hmm. You know, like okay. uh, in the military, even if they're, you know, like the Navy SEALs or, you know, anything like that. Yeah, like their family forever. It's so annoying. Yes. Here's what I think they're missing in the Lego thing specifically. And oh, why yeah, Legos. Yeah. And I, if the article didn't mention this, I'm going to guess it was written by a man. A big, huge component of why th- what we're looking at in the Lego response, this is just looking at the Lego pain response. But anybody who has stubbed their toe the same week that your period starts or right after you got in a fight with your boyfriend or right after you yelled at your kid for doing something knows that the pain that you experience when you stub your toe then is 10 times the amount that you'd normally feel. If you step on a Lego, mm-hmm. there are more emotional ties to what just happened than the pain response of stepping on a Lego. We can assume a kid's toys have been left out. The parent probably asked those to- for those toys to be picked up. Now you step on a Lego. This is not just the pain of I stepped on a Lego. This is the, oh, I told them to pick this up. Paired with the emotional pain, paired with the physical pain. That's why stepping on a Lego Whoa. is so much more intense. Yeah, because if you did step on a piece of glass at your house, you're not, nobody just, like, there's sort no, of left no it blame. Out. No, th- right. This That's is deeper. And I That's bet somebody who's not a mother wrote this because a mother would have a different feeling. That is so. Funny. Mark, it is a woman, but I think you're right. I think I bet she doesn't have kids. Other than a therapist. Right. That this is different. Maybe she does. What do I know? But I'm just saying, I'm writing fan fiction, is what I'm doing. So No, because I well this I think there's an emotional component think of that, that we're ignoring. That there's a reason why that the that the the significance of that that there's more when that when you step on the Lego, anybody who stepped why are you you know how many Legos I've stepped on in my house? Fucking zero. How many have you stepped on? Probably a few. Yeah. Literally never stepped on a Lego accidentally in my life. Adult life. Because I have no children around leaving Lego shit everywhere. But if I did, it would then remind me about a lot more than just those Legos. It would probably remind me about my friend who doesn't have any kids who doesn't ever step on Legos. Which would then make me feel like this is a thing that I think we're missing in this. And so that's why I think all the YouTube people or people who are like whatever is TikTok people who are like, look at how many I go cross on are doing it without the emotional pain. That's the, what makes it so intolerable. That is a very insightful theory. Thank you. I, that is, I you never know how, thought of it myself. Thank you. And I am a mom. Thank you. <laughs> I held on to that one. I was like, I know this is so good. I'm going to let her finish the whole Lego story. And I'm, I'm not even going to interrupt to try to share this, which I always do. So I'm going to, I should ask Lincoln too. Like what, what do you think would be worse? Stepping on a Lego or stepping on glass? He'd probably say glass. He would probably say glass. Yes, he would. And I think anybody who doesn't have children would say glass. (laughs) I actually think we could do this poll. (laughs) Because I would say glass. And you were like, oh! Because I've literally never experienced this. Yes, I really do Mm -hmm. think. I can't believe that that nobody, that they, that this isn't. I want to, I would, if I were an older person if i were retired i would write i would write a letter i would write into this would be like i would write the editor and i'd say i just want to say you know because we always talk about like who does those kind of things where like people who have a whole bunch of time or like and i remember i wrote in the corrections in that crossword puzzle once that like and they were like thanks so much and then they didn't even send me anything new like that because it's like you're it's, nothing's gonna happen so I, I i i need time to do this but i i think if i were 80 years old i would write the editor and say that Hmm. Well, but as a parent who was reading it and didn't think of it, I would say whenever you register pain, mm. typically you're not, you're just going to go with what's obvious. And it's like this Lego oh, hurts. 100%. Gonna, well, also, yeah. we know the why. Because when you're experiencing pain, the part of your brain that would be able to even have the awareness of that is not functioning because you're in survive you're in like 
that's that's the that's the reptilian part of your brain that's like mm-hmm. even registering that. It's because I'm not experiencing that pain and I don't have the emotional ties to it that I'm able able to even have the awareness and like recognize it because you can step back from yeah it's it's like how I say to my clients you got to like zoom out on the problem if you're in it it's because I I don't have that emotional tie that I can have that that you know well whatever like you know yeah you have more clarity yeah because hmm. yeah, no, you're probably Sarah. thinking about that physical response. Interesting. I'm impressed. It's a good story. I just I I I I can't wait to hear what other Lego uh, uh, stepper honors have to say about this. Mm-hmm. I could be both. I could be both. It could be. No, I think people will be like, "Oh yeah, I think you're onto something." All right. Yeah. Um. What do you want to hear about? Just a little bit of trivia about autism or... Oh, I want to hear about that. About subtitles. Okay. Oh, but I want to hear that too. Oh, I'm going to go with subtitles. Okay. I am. I Because Eli and I love to joke. I Sorry, I can't hear the movie without the subtitles on. <laughs> so you leave them on. I would love them on and everything. Except no. comedy. Because I've heard that nobody likes watching that with me because I laugh before they say it because they pop up on the screen and I did not know I was doing that until somebody said we can't do that anymore. That's annoying. I can't believe you're watching subtitles on like comedy. Well, oh, only because I, I'm too lazy to turn them off. I, they just go on and then I, they just stay you on. You have them I, on by default? I like them. Wow. You well, don't. No, you're not alone. You're not alone. I don't ever use subtitles but you apparently You have a British husband. Like... <laughs> I swear, <laughs> because half the reason I turn them on in the first place is for things like Game of Thrones, where I can't understand what they're saying because yeah, they're it's it's too dark and everybody's accent is is too British. <laughs> I can't hear. I can't understand them. I will say that whenever someone says something British and I don't know what they said, I just ask him. I'm like, what did they say? And he knows. And yeah, he that's me. it. And I, it's it's because we, we watch a lot of shows that have people with yeah. English accents. And so we turn on subtitles and, and then they well, stay evidently on a lot, of, <laughs> a lot of Gen Zers, a lot of young people are using subtitles all the time. And there was an article or video huh. article on, I think it was Vice about like why. And it was saying that it's not like just sort of a a generational thing or whatever. It is that there's all these factors that come in that make it really hard to understand what actors are saying now Uh that it didn't used to be like that. Okay. So like the sound. Yeah. They were listing all the things that some of it's like technological, some, well, mostly because it's like, um, First of all, a lot of things are made for the movie theater, but then we watch them on our laptops or totally on the flat screens that are so thin. And so the speakers are on the back and it goes into the wall. And so the flat screens are designed to look nicer. They're not designed because they sound better or something. Right. You almost have to buy the separate thing, like a sound bar. We, yeah. got, we had to like get separate speakers to make it so we could actually hear. And now we could hear the, now we don't use the subtitles as much. Yeah. Because we got, yes. You have a better sound yes. system. Yes. That just happened. Then it was saying like oh. that back in the day, you know, like old timey movies, black and whites, they didn't have great microphone systems. So like actors projected almost like they were in the theater still. And it was like very dramatic. You are way so of right. And now we have these awesome lav- lavalier mics that we wear or actors wear, and um, they know how powerful the mics are, so they know they can just sort of whisper and it'll pick it up. Even, like famously, I think it was Robert De Niro, like his co-stars are always like, we can't even hear him when he does his lines, but the, it, the mic picks it up. So like the mic oh, can hear it, but the human can't. this makes so much sense. You are so right. You are pointing out things that changed, like changing of like, 
white paint to off white paint on the wall where you'd never notice. But now when you say, I'm like, that is a fucking different. They talk. Yeah. You are so right. How actors project their voice changed because of microphones. Yeah. They didn't have to scream everything, you know? (gasps) So then they kind of almost took it too far where they're just like, they don't even feel like that. And like, you know, they assume the mic will pick it up, which it does, but it really only works well in a theater. Right. Where you can hear any, the sounds coming at you from all sides. And you know that thing where, like, you're watching a movie and, like, the action parts are so loud and so it almost hurts? So loud. I said that yeah. to them. I'm like, I, if they can invent something that stops this, I will yeah. spend I, I, whatever money you want I because I hate right. it. Well, they had an audio, like, I don't think it's an engineer. Like, she's an engineer, but on the back end, like, uh, in post. Yeah. And she was like, we can't do it. Like, everyone just says, can't you just turn down? Yes, you know, it it's down. hurting our ears. But, like... <gasps> To, in order for you as the viewer to understand that this isn't just like a little explosion, this is like, (laughs) like a bomb exploding, it has to be humongous in comparison to the actors sort of just regular talking. But I It makes sense when you say it, but I don't like it. No, none of us like it. I don't know. They need to sort it out. We put them in. And can we just turn up the lights too? What do you mean? It's too dark on every show. Is it? Oh, oh yeah. I remember people saying that about God. Game of Thrones. They'd be like, we can't even see the scene. HBO. What's happening? Why do they do Turn that? Turn up the brightness. Euphoria. Mm-hmm. Too dark. Game of Thrones. I wonder what the reason too dark. is. I don't there know. There must be a similar it's like a reason. Mood thing. Yeah. I think so. You know what? Maybe. Mm. But I mean, for real, yeah. sort it out. Sort it out, please. Would you? Oh, uh, Harry Potter. You can look at all of those. They've done that. Like the the Harry Potter just gets darker and darker and darker and darker. And I don't mean by subject matter. When my mom was here, because she when she was recovering, yeah. like Lincoln made her watch all the Harry Potter movies, which she the wouldn't devil. even like. We weren't. Yeah, we weren't allowed to watch shit like Please. that growing now, up. Wizards, right? It was say it's satanic. I mean, God, it's a gateway and so drug. It's like the occult. Yeah, and anyway, she like didn't get that it was the same Harry Potter in every movie. She, she thought it was like because you know to her it's all happening at once. Like, but for us it was over twenty years or something. Oh, I see, I see, <laughs> like, I see. But like he told us one night he was like laughing when he was supposed to be going to sleep, and I'm like, what is so funny? And then he told me he's like Peg thought that it was multiple Harry Potter m- m- actors, and I was like, okay, that is funny. <laughs> Um, I love that he's just lying in bed giggling about that. He is your like, son. What a dumbass, Peg. <laughs> so great. Okay, one more Lincoln story, and then I know we got to go. This is so funny. We ran out of um, normal tea that we have every uh-huh. morning, uh-huh. and I was drinking the tea, and then I noticed on the tag that it was decaffeinated, mm-hmm. and I was like, decaffeinated? Pfft. I don't want. What is this? And Lincoln was like, is mine decapitated too? <laughs> Like, dead serious. <laughs> His mind decapitated. Like, number one, that he would care. And number two, that he thought decapitated was the right word. That is so cute. That's times. when, I love when the, you find the thing that the kid says that you're going to keep saying that. Like, for the next yeah. 30 years, he, yeah. he's guaranteed that he's going to so be like, true. Cause, uh, my Cause little brother used to call right it a team. flum instead of a thumb. And I'm like, well, this is a flum. And a C. And now we still say that because one time he said flum. And so (laughs) now it's always going to be decapitated tea. It's so good. Anyway, whatever. We or you get it. We were winding down. There was murders. There was false confessions. There was so many murders. Prison experiment. There was a woman stuck in a storm drain. I mean, yeah, but this is a lot of like controversial. You thought it was going to be one way, but. It's not. Turns out it's different. Yeah. Le- don't step on a Lego, but better I mean, than glass. No, worse than glass. Worse than coals. It is. Wor- I would. I say yeah. And I think this is evidence that all that bullshit of like I walked across hot coals and glass. It's like no fuck. It's not impressive. Get over yourself. No. 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 Get no. a thousand paper cuts. Then we're talking. There you go. Then talk to me. Yeah. Tell me how you endured that. Okay. Anyway. I forgot to leave. Oh, let me. I was supposed to read a review. 
Oh. I won't I won't burden you with the music with the jingle, but I will say this review is cute. Oh, this is from yeah. Classic Greenway, which I love that name. Yeah. Uh love this podcast. Exclamation, exclamation. I listen every time a new one drops. Y'all make me think and laugh out loud. I love this podcast. Thank you, Classic Greenway. Thank you. And thank you for your inclusive use of y'all. I love it, y'all. Yes, I appreciate that. Yeah. I don't love y'all because Southern, I, my worst enemy is a Southerner and she says y'all. Oh. But okay. I do like that it's gender inclusive. Okay. I do like that too. We love you guys. Thank you for all the reviews and yes. for checking out our website, thebraincattypodcast.com, because we have merch up there. You can join our book club. You can join our doc club. Check out our patreon.com slash brain candy for more content. So much fun stuff. We love you guys. We'll see you next Bye. time.